Hi, my name is Jonathan Farrell. I'm a postdoc on Tim Bain's Architecture of Consciousness project at the University of Manchester. Um, my paper is concerned with what it is like talk. And by what it's like talk, I mean the use of phrases such as what it is like, something it is like, and nothing it is like. And by what it is like sentences, I mean sentences that involve these phrases. Now, what it's like talk is ubiquitous in the philosophy of mind, in discussions of phenomenal consciousness. So perhaps the first thing that comes to mind is um, Nagel's 1974 paper, What Is It Like to Be a Bat? But pretty much everyone who has talked about consciousness since then has engaged in this kind of talk. So what it is like talk is used to define consciousness. So here's a definition from Uriah Kriegel. Phenomenal consciousness is a property mental states, events and processes have when and only when there is something it is like for the subject to undergo them or be in them. What it is like talk is also used to make statements about consciousness. So here's Ty. We all know what it is like to undergo the visual experience of bright purple, the feeling of fear or the sensation of being tickled. And it's used to ask questions about consciousness. Here's Pitt. What is it like to think that P? So we use it to define consciousness, to make statements about consciousness, to ask questions about consciousness, to argue about consciousness. But what it's like talk is unclear. First, it's not obvious what we mean when we engage in what it's like talk. So PMS Hacker has argued that when philosophers engage in what it's like talk, they're talking nonsense. Paul Snowden says that when we use this language to talk about consciousness, we're literally saying something that's false or trivial. So we don't, it's unclear what it means. Secondly, it's unclear how this talk means whatever it is that it means. So how is it that by putting these words in this order, we end up talking about consciousness? So just to summarize what I've said so far, what it's like talk is important to discussions of consciousness, but it's unclear. And without a good account of it, we can't be sure that by using this talk, we are casting shadows rather than shedding light on our investigations of consciousness. So a popular view here is what I call the technical account of what it's like talk. What it's like talk involves technical terms, where a technical term is a word or a phrase whose meaning is peculiar to or closely connected with a particular trade, discipline or area of thought. So this is quite, as I say, this is quite a popular view. So here's David Lewis. He says, what it is like is ordinary enough, but when used as a term for qualia, it's used in a special technical sense. Alex Byrne says, it's doubtful that there is something that's like for so-and-so to phi has some special use to describe subjectivity, dialect of analytic philosophy aside. And David Brad Mitchell and Frank Jackson in their Introduction to Philosophy of Mind book say, recent interest in the knowledge argument arises particularly from Thomas Nagel's What Is It Like to Be a Bat? The title tells you where the phrase comes from. So we can give the technical account um, as the conjunction of three statements. So the first one, technical, says what it's like sentences involve technical terms. The second statement, call it introduction, says these terms were introduced by philosophers. And the third statement, call it meaning, says it's because of the special meaning that these terms have that we can use what it's like talk to talk about consciousness. In this paper, I argue that the technical account of what it's like talk is false. And it's false because introduction is false and also technical is false. So what I'll do in the rest of this brief video introduction is just to give you a sense of the arguments um, that I give against these two statements. Here's the argument against introduction. The earliest instances of philosophers engaging in what it's like talk to talk about consciousness that I found are Nagel in 1974, Sprigg in 71, Farrell in 1950, Wittgenstein in the mid 40s, and Russell in 1926. And in none of these examples do we find features that we would expect to find were these writers introducing new technical terminology into philosophy. So none of them tells us which words or phrases are the allegedly technical ones. None of them tell us what the allegedly technical terms mean, which is odd given that they could be confused with everyday counterparts. And none even indicates that they're using language in a new non-everyday technical way. So all this together suggests that these writers are not introducing new terms. In other words, introduction is false. Okay, the second statement that makes up or is part of 
the technical account is technical. Here's the argument for why technical is false. There are many examples of what it's like talk being used to talk about consciousness that come from outside philosophy, and some of these precede philosophical uses. So I give six examples in the paper dating from 1891 all the way up to 2012, and others can be found by searching linguistic corpora or for more recent use, uses by uh, searching on the internet. These examples show that technical is false because these non-philosophers use what it's like talk to talk about conscious states associated with bodily sensations, with perceptions, and with emotions. In other words, just the same sorts of things that philosophers use what it's like talk to talk about. And there's no difference in meaning, in precision, or in scope, or in nuance between the non-philosophical examples and the what it's like talk that philosophers engage in. So the alleged technical terms used by philosophers have the same meaning as the non-technical terms used by non-philosophers. In other words, these are not technical terms at all. So here's a brief summary of what I've said in this video. What it's like talk is ubiquitous in discussions of consciousness, so it's important that we understand this talk. But what it means, and how it means whatever it means, is unclear. So a popular approach here is to adopt the technical account of what it's like talk, and this is made up of three statements. First one, call it technical. What it's like sentences involve technical terms. Second statement, introduction. These terms were introduced by philosophers. Third statement, meaning. It is because of the special meaning that these terms have that we can use what it's like talk to talk about consciousness. But introduction is false. When we look at early uses of what it's like sentences by philosophers, we do not find what we would expect to find if they were introducing or even just making an early use of the technical term. So we should reject introduction. And technical is false. What non-philosophers mean when they engage in what it's like talk is no different to what philosophers mean when they engage in it. Okay, thank you very much for listening. I look forward to any questions and comments that people have. Thanks.